Welcome back. This is Technomath TPC Algebra 1 end of course exam training. We are now at Georgia Milestones Assessment System page and so we will specifically look at the GMIS Algebra 1 EOC and we have already used the practice test so we're going to use something else on their site. So we'll go to this page. I have given you the link to this in your show notes and click on online tools training. Uh, last time we did the test practice, which was this first link, and this time we're going to go to the second one, which is study guide for students and parents. And we're going to choose algebra concepts and connections. When you get in here, you're going to click through the tutorial. So click on online study guide and then just click on through this tutorial. begin the test. Now we did this item that you're seeing now on the actual test practice so we're not going to do it again. Uh, at the top on the left side you'll see where it says question one. Click there and it's going to open up a whole page so you can choose a question and we're going to start with question number three. So choose three and you'll see this one. Now the difference in the study guide and the test, as you see here, is a whole bunch of text on the left side that has some definitions and it has your actual standard. So um, of course you can read through that if you'd like, but the focus of this training is the Desmos graphing calculator. So that will be called the graphing tool in this toolbar. So press the button that says graphing tool. And I'm gonna move this over here. And we're gonna work this problem using the graphing tool. It says the first term in a sequence is 5, and the fourth term in the sequence is negative 4, and the tenth term is negative 22, which function could be used. Uh, so what we're going to do each uh, for each one of these is we're going to start typing in the answer choice. So I'll begin with answer choice A, and then I'm going to go to the next row in the graphing calculator, and I'm going to type in um, the term number for the N, because the N is the nth term of the sequence. So let's see, the first term is five. So let's type f of one for first term. And I am not getting the first term is five. So I know that the answer choice A is incorrect. There's no need to choose uh, to check all those other terms. So I'm gonna go back to my function f of n and I'm gonna change it to answer choice two. So answer choice two, B, I mean, is uh, F of N equals N plus four. Now F of one is equal to five, but I can't just stop there. I do need to check to see if these other terms are working as well. It says the fourth term in the sequence is negative four. So let's type F of four for fourth term. And that is incorrect. The fourth term is supposed to be negative four. And here we see an eight. So let's go ahead and change this again. We're going to take that out and we're going to replace it with negative 3n plus 8. So we are now checking answer choice C. So f of 1 is correct. It's 5. f of 4 is correct. And I bet the next one is 2, but let's type it anyway. f of 10. It says 10th term should be negative 22 and that is correct. So the correct answer in this problem is answer choice C. Um, the next problem we're gonna do is seven. So click at the top left corner. Um, you will probably need to close this. So you can see under it. And then let's see, seven is here. So choose seven. And then we're going to do this problem. There's a lot of text in this test. I've noticed it's very wordy, uh, but don't let that alarm you. My, my suggestion is don't read all that unless you really need it. So right now I'm going to go to the very last part of this question, which says which combination of computers X and tablets Y can the store order? Well, I'm assuming these two inequalities have something to do with that. So um, let's see if this is true. The store has only 45 square feet of display. The system of inequality shown can be used to determine. Okay, so I definitely just need to use this system. I don't need to read every bit of that text to do it. So let's start by opening our graphing tool. I'm going to move it to the left. We aren't able to resize our um, graphing calculator, so I'm we need to try to keep it open while we're 
working without resizing. All right, so I'm going to type in these two inequalities. So the first one is 875x plus 235y is less than or equal to 10,000. Now you do not want to type commas in your numbers when you're typing. Now you may wonder how in the world did I type that less than or equal? Well, I probably need to tell you. The first thing I do is I type less than and it creates a less than sign and then I immediately type equal and it puts the two together, less than or equal, and then type the 10,000 without the comma. And you can see some shaded region in this graph. We're going to need to adjust it uh, in a minute but let's just wait on that. The second row is going to be the second inequality. 4x plus 3y is less than, so type less than, equal, and that'll put a less than or equal, 45. You also have the option of using this keypad at the bottom to get your symbol there. So if you're comfortable that way, you can do it. Now the question is, I want to know which order pair is a solution. So I'm going to click on the screen and drag down. So if you have a mouse or even a touchpad, you can do that. Now you will notice there's four distinct regions in this graph. There's the part that's only shaded red. There's the white. There's the part that's only shaded blue. And then there's both shaded red and blue. It looks sort of purple. And so our solutions are where these two inequalities overlap, which is in this purple region. So when we are graphing these points, and I'm going to go ahead and graph 8, 4, you just type them in and click on label. And we are looking for a point that's either on a solid line in the shaded region, or it's on, uh, it can be on the solid line, but it has to be in the purple part of the graph. It cannot be in just the blue or in just the red part. So in this case, it really just needs to be on because the only point these have in common would be right in here somewhere. So anyway, 8-4 looks good. So I'm going to choose that, but I am going to always check these others because I always want to make sure I haven't overlooked anything. So 10-2, you'll see that one is purple on my graph, but if you zoom in here, you can see that purple one is only on the red part of the graph. That is not a solution. So we're not going to choose that one. The next one was 7, 9. So I'm labeling these as I go. 7, 9. Can't even see that one. There, it's way up there. It's still in only the red part of the graph. It needs to be in the purple looking region where the two overlap. And the last is 5, 9. All right, and then 5, 9 is also in just the red part. So the only one that works in both inequalities is answer choice A. Okay, the next item we need to go to is item number 11. Um, let's see, question 11. I don't know why answer choice D is picked here because I haven't even read it. Uh, 11 is also an inequality system. And we're looking for a true statement. So let's read the statements. The first statement says, is this true for the point 0, 3? And then we'll go ahead and look at this one in the graph as well. So let's type, uh, press on the button that says graphing tool. And let's move it over. And let's type in the first inequality. X is less than or equal to, be sure you put both, and then put your 5. And then the second inequality goes on a separate row. Y is greater than negative 2x plus 3. All right, so I'm looking at the point 0, 3. So type in the point 0, 3, and let's label that. And it is on a dashed line. Okay, here's the thing. A point on a dashed line is not part of the solution of that inequality. And that's because here, that's coming from the blue one. If you'll notice it's a blue line that's dashed. Y is greater than negative 2x plus 3. That means the points on the line is where y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. And we don't want the numbers where the y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. We want y to be greater. So it needs to be above this line in this purple region. So let's see which answer choice is saying that. 0, 3 is not a solution. So answer choice A says the point 0, 3 is a solution. For inequality 2, um, 
let's see, inequality two, if we turn off the first one, it is not a solution for inequality two. It says not a solution for inequality one. Well, it is a solution for inequality one because it's in the red part of the graph, which is the first inequality. So that one is definitely wrong. I'm gonna choose the answer eliminator up here to cross off this problem. All right, so let's go to the next answer. The point zero 0.03 is not a solution for this system. Um, it is definitely not a solution for this system because it has to be true for both the first and the second inequality. So I'm gonna say this one is correct. And then let's look at the other two and make sure we haven't missed anything. It says the point zero 0.03 is only a solution, is the only solution for this system. Well, no, because all of the points that fall in this region are solutions and there are an infinite number of points in here. I could choose 0, 10, I could choose 1, 8, I could put a whole bunch more in there. All of those are solutions, so that's not true. And the last one says the point zero three 3 is one of many solutions uh, for this system. Well, no, it's not a solution because it's on a dashed line. It has to be true for both inequalities so the correct answer was answer choice B. The next item we're looking at is 12. Uh, you could have actually used this arrow to get to the next page, but it's asking which of these is irrational. So we are gonna use the graphing tool, although the graph on this is not relevant. It's really just typing in. Uh, it says which value is irrational. So I want you to type the first number, four, plus square root, so do SQRT and put a seven. Now, when you get a number like this one with a bunch of decimals, there's no con no pattern observable, it's just a bunch of decimals. This is an irrational number um, because, because of the square root of seven, really. The square root of seven is irrational, so when you add a four to a square root of seven, it's still gonna be irrational. Now let's type the others to see what these look like, even though the first one's right. I do wanna look at the others. So I've got square root of two, and then I've got SQRT8. This is implied that you're multiplying. Notice the answer here is super nice, it's a four. All whole numbers are integers. Uh, the whole numbers are all rational, so this one is not irrational. The second one, we're going to type SQRT3, and then I'm going to hit the right arrow divided by 5, and then I'm going to go back to the top and put SQRT12. And uh, this one's also coming out nice. It's just a terminating decimal. So 1.2 and all terminating decimals are rational. So that one is rational, not irrational. And then the last one is square root of three. You already know this one though. This one's zero, but I'll go ahead and type it anyway. Hit the right arrow before you hit the minus. Otherwise it'll put that minus sign under the square root. It's coming out to be zero. Well, zero is an integer and all integers are rational. So these last three are all nice. So you'll notice the only one that's different from the others is the correct answer. And that's answer choice A. So the last question we're looking at on this practice set is question 14. So using the graphing tool, uh, we're just gonna type these in. So the first one is five square roots of eight. So we'll do five SQRT eight, and then hit the right arrow to move out from under your square root. Shift eight is multiply, and then three, and then SQRT and then put your four. Now, if you're wondering, I'm just not gonna remember SQRT, and I don't know shift eight is multiply. You can use this keypad. If you click on it, you'll see the square root is here, and you'll see the multiplication button here, so you can use both of those instead. Uh, I tend to only use keyboard sh shortcuts simply because it saves time in the long run. All right, so the first thing I notice is this, De decimal. So I'm looking for an answer that gives me exactly that. So let's type 15 SQRT2 and that is different. So answer choice A I'm going to eliminate. Click the answer eliminator and you can cross it out. 
And then let's go ahead and try the next answer. It's 60 square roots of 2, SQRT2. And that one looks the same. It is. All these digits match these. So the correct answer is B. This concludes this GMOS training. I hope you've learned something today. There are two more videos in this training series. And there are two videos that have already been done for this training series. So be sure if you haven't already to check out the first two videos and stay tuned for more Georgia Milestones Assessment System Algebra 1 training for the Desmos Graphing Calculator. Y'all have a great day.